Should you become a biochemist or biophysicist in 2022? The purpose of this video is to help you figure that out. Later in this video, we're going to go over wages, demand, the personalities of biochemists and bio biophysicists, demographics, and more, all to help you figure out whether this particular occupation is for you. Biochemists and biophysicists study the chemical composition and physical properties of living cells and organisms. Often they're conducting research to further understand reproduction, growth, heredity, and metabolism. They can work in a wide variety of industries and are often employed to study the effects of foods, drugs, serums, hormones, and more. Just like other scientists, biochemists and biophysicists need to constantly review literature and findings of other researchers, as well as prepare technical reports, research papers, and recommendations based off their findings. Just like other people in the healthcare industry, biochemists and biophysicists tend to report pretty high job satisfaction, and they tend to get a lot of meaning out of their particular roles. According to the Payscale Meaning Survey, about 70% of biochemists and biophysicists report extreme satisfaction or fair satisfaction with their jobs. And 62% report that they think their work makes the world a better place. Meaning and job satisfaction are two components of choosing a good career for you. If you need help choosing an occupation, we actually have a seven step process that includes meaning and job satisfaction as two variables in choosing a career. Check out the link below for more details. So what kind of people actually become biochemists and biophysicists? If you became one, what kind of people would be surrounded by you? Well, there's actually demographic data on this particular occupation. First, let's look at the demographics of the United States. In the United States, it's about 51% female, 19% Hispanic Latino, 75% Caucasian, 14% African American, and 6% Asian American. Meanwhile, when we look at the demographics of life science careers, of which biochemists and biophysicists are a part of, it skews a little bit male, it's about 53% male, about 8% Hispanic Latino, 75% Caucasian, 7% African American, and 15% Asian American. So looking at the demographics, we can see that Asian Americans are well represented in the life science careers. We can also look at the Myers-Briggs personality types of biochemists and biophysicists. According to the Myers-Briggs company, certain personality types are well represented in certain occupations and others are less represented in certain occupations. The most commonly found Myers-Briggs types for biochemists are ISTJ, the inspector, INTJ, the mastermind, and the ESTJ, the executive. Meanwhile, the most likely Myers-Briggs types to become a biochemist, the INTJ, the ENTJ, and the INTP. So if you have one of these Myers-Briggs personality types and you go and become a biochemist or biophysicist, you're probably gonna be surrounded by people kind of just like you. Next, we can get into the requirements of becoming a biophysicist or a biochemist. How much education do you really need to get into this particular occupation? The first thing to ask yourself is, where are biochemists and biophysicists employed? If you were to get a job, which industry would you actually be in? Which industry would you most likely work in? According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, 57% of biochemists and biophysicists work in research and development, 15% work in higher education, 23% work in other, and 5% are employed in the manufacturing sector. To really work and get the better jobs within research and development and higher education, you definitely need a PhD to enter those two industries, and they make up a large part of biochemists and biophysicists. So for this particular occupation, you do tend to need a doctoral degree to get those better jobs. But then we can also look at, and this is recent data from Bureau of Labor Statistics, the education breakdown of employed biochemists and biophysicists. You would actually think about half of biochemists and biophysicists would have a PhD, but they actually found that about a quarter did. About 23% of employed biochemists and biophysicists had a PhD, 46% had a bachelor's degree, and 31% in the sample had a master's degree. So there are employment opportunities for biochemists and biophysicists that just have a bachelor's degree or even just a master's degree. But to really do research and development or to work in a college or university, a lot of those people are on track to get a doctoral degree or a PhD. But this just shows you that you can definitely enter the occupation potentially with just a bachelor's degree. Next up, we can look at wages. What kind of wages can biochemists and biophysicists expect? In 2021, the average base salary for a biochemist or biophysicist was $113,460. When you compare them to similar occupations in the sciences, biochemists and biophysicists are only really out-earned by physicists 
who earn around $152,000 per year just as a base salary. Biochemists and biophysicists tend to out earn biomedical engineers, chemists, medical scientists, microbiologists, and zoologists. But to be perfectly fair, uh, biochemists and biophysicists are much more likely to have a PhD over, say, a microbiologist. We can also look at wages over time. In 2016, the average base salary for people in this occupation was $94,340. This rose to $113,460 in 2021. So between 2020 and 2021, there was almost a $9,000 wage growth or an 8% gain in the average wage. But this is partially due to the fact that wages slightly dipped between 2019 and 2020. Biochemists and biophysicists can earn even more if they live in some very specific places in the United States. No surprise here, but the number one highest paying place for biochemists and biophysicists, and this is probably because of Harvard and MIT and other highly prestigious organizations is the Boston, Massachusetts metro area where the average base salary for a biochemist or biophysicist is around $135,000 per year. Number two is kind of interesting. I wouldn't think this would be the second highest place in the country, but it's actually Portland, Oregon, where the average base salary is around $133,000 per year. So two places where you can actually earn a lot more than other parts of the country. Next up, we have demand. How much demand right now is there for biochemists and biophysicists in 2022? If you were to go get a PhD in this particular field, will you immediately have a job lined up or will you struggle to get that first, second, or even third job? First thing to understand is this is a, it's a moderate sized occupation. There's about 35,000 employed biochemists and biophysicists in the United States. So this is a bigger occupation, a bigger workforce than say, biomedical engineering, microbiology, physics, and zoology, but there are more employed chemists and medical scientists. We can also look at the government forecast for people in this occupation. The US government via the Bureau of Labor Statistics is actually pretty bullish on the future job prospects of biochemists and biophysicists. Keep in mind, these people are wrong all the time, but it's interesting to look at their projections. Personally, I really like looking at job posting data, which we're going to look at later in this video, but they're projecting about a 15% growth in the number of jobs over the next 10 years. So really they're only projecting that medical scientists have a higher growth rate than biochemists. Biochemists have a higher growth rate than biomedical engineers, chemists, zoologists, physicists, and microbiologists. We can also look at the number of employed biochemists and biophysicists over time. In 2016, there were 29,200 employed biochemists and biophysicists. This rose to 35,050 in 2021. So between 2016 and 2021, there's been a gain of around 6,000 employed biochemists and biophysicists. But I think one of the best things to look at over government projections, over the past growth rate, is job postings. How many job postings are there for you in your particular occupation? So I, I like to look at three different platforms, Indeed, Glassdoor, and LinkedIn, and just count the number of job postings and compare it against the number of employed. And this can, can give us an idea of the demand for people in a given occupation. On glassdoor.com for biochemists, we found around 5,000 job postings. On indeed.com, around 9,000 job postings. And on LinkedIn, around 34,000 job postings for biochemists, and this doesn't include biophysicists. So when we compare job postings on these three different platforms against the number of employed, we can actually tell that there's plenty of job postings for biochemists right now in the US labor force. So that's all the data we have for you today regarding biochemists and biophysicists in 2022. What did you think of the video? Let, let us know down in the comments below, especially let us know if you're a biochemist or a biophysicist, let us know what you enjoy and what you dislike about this particular occupation. We also have a free personality assessment, our favorite personality assessment down in the comments below. You can take it for free, just click the link below and there's also our flagship course, Choose the Right Career, if you need help choosing an occupation. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.